like to appear on camera, there is another option. You could change yourself to an avatar. So this meeting is structured so that you show up in the best way that makes you feel comfortable so that you can get all the information and like knowledge to that is camera. gonna be shared from these option. amazing you rock stars. Your... Brenda. There you go, Christopher Johnson in the house all. Thank you so much, Christopher, for that lovely introduction. And I wanna welcome all of you and thank you so much for joining us today. Let me stop my screen share here. And as I'm getting started, I know that not everyone may be happy to be here today because if you are here today, that means that you are in career transition or alternatively, you might be here because you're supporting those that are in career transition. And I want to speak to those of you who are in career transition right now. Um, it is a roller coaster. Some days you're going to be happy that you're not working. You know, the release the release of the stress that you didn't have anymore. And other days you are going to be feeling very frustrated that you're not back to work yet. And why is it taking so long? And there's days in between there where you're feeling like, you know, you're you're up in terms of your mood because of the fact that um, my captions keep coming up on screen, Christopher. I can't hide them. This is weird. Okay, sorry. I get so distracted. I'm like, I get shiny object syndrome. I'm like reading what I say. And then I go, that's not what I said. Do you guys do that too? Is it just... <laughs> At any rate, um, it's a roller coaster of emotions and you might be feeling up because you got a call back from a recruiter, you got an interview, and then you're feeling down because they said they went into another direction or it sounded like it was a for sure thing. And they said, we're going to call you back by Tuesday and here it is Friday and you've not heard anything back. Um, I want to let you know wherever you're at in the journey. We are here for you. We are a support community. I call these Friday VIP Job Seeker Office Hours, and I want to break that down. This is the first Friday of the month. Every Friday, first Friday of the month from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern, we hold this as a free call. Now, if you're unable to join us live, we do have this live streamed on YouTube. In a moment, I'll pop that um, link into chat in case you want to watch the playback later. We also have a playlist of previous calls, and I'll eventually be converting these into a podcast so you can listen to some of the past tips and insights that we've offered. Uh, Friday. So the VIP is the second part of that. VIP because you are a very important person. I had one person who accidentally read that at one point and she thought I meant VP and she said, I'm not a VP level, can I come in? And I said, absolutely, this is a very important person. And this is not just VPs. We do have VPs on the call. We have people that are at the director level. We have coordinator level. We have every uh, level in every phase of the career that are joining us. And I want you to know that you are a very important person, regardless of your employment status. And I say that because those of you who have been in corporate, you can probably relate. When you're in a corporate role, you don't realize until you're not in the role anymore. But some people who you thought were your friends and your supporters, they were really only your friends and supporters because of the job title that you held. And then you left and you're like, they turn their back on you. You don't hear back from them. You're like, wait a minute. Was it just the job title or was it me? Right. And still other people you find that were acquaintances and they have your back and they do support you and they reach out and they say, hey, Brenda, how's your job search going? Right. So I want you to know in this community, all of you, and we're up to 56 people on the call today. All of you are in my eyes, a very important person. And I am delighted that you are here today. We are always welcome to have you joining us month after month. And um, we're also happy to see when you're not on here because hopefully that means you're back to work, okay? So until that time, I wanna um, encourage you to come on every Friday. And we're also gonna have a very lively chat. You can already see uh, some of our past members dropping their introductions into chat. And what I'd like you to do is to go into chat right now, and I'm gonna give you an example of what you should do. I just put mine into chat. You don't need to say, hi, this is Brenda Meller because Zoom will say Brenda Meller to everyone. But what I do want you to do is very succinctly tell us your targeted job title, at least one job title that you're looking for. Tell us your targeted geographic area. Where in the world are you looking for work or where in the world are you based out of? And then drop in your LinkedIn URL. Do make sure that your LinkedIn URL contains the HTTPS. That way it's blue and it's clickable. And then you can invite fellow job seekers to connect during the call here today. Now, LinkedIn did roll out recently a an add a note limit. You either can send five of them per month or 10 of them per month, depending on the 
the test group that you're in. And, and I'm speaking right now to those of you who are using the free basic version of LinkedIn. If you're using premium, you don't have a limit. You can add a note with every single invitation that you send. But for those of you that have that limit, I would say don't waste them on people in this group because look at the names, watch for invitations and accept them and then message them afterwards. Okay, You really want to use those add a note features for individuals that could help you with your job search, could help you to find that next job opportunity if you will. All right, what I'm going to do next is we're going to go through and I'm going to ask my VIP all-stars to introduce themselves. If those all-stars could help me out by using the raise a hand function, and that lets me know who is on the call here today, and you'll raise your hand. I'll give each of you the opportunity to introduce yourselves. And then after that, we will move into Q&A. For those of you who are participants today, any questions you have related to your job search, um, finding jobs, using LinkedIn to find a job, resume, salary negotiation, feeling stuck, whatever your questions are, we'll do some Q&A today. And as we do questions, I want to remind you, we always prefer, just like Christopher said, put the word question in all caps and then type out your question. That just makes it a little bit easier for me to see as I'm scrolling through the chat to find your questions. If you have a success story you'd like to share, type in SUCCESS, the word S-U-C-C-E-S-S -S -S in all caps. We'll call on you and you can share your success story with us. All right, with that said, we're gonna go through and we're gonna do our all-star introductions. And I'm gonna do what I did. I've done this on our past few calls. I'm gonna bring you up. So Mindy, you're on deck right now because you're in the second video panel. And then I will just pull each of you in and we'll just go through here continuously. Okay, go ahead, Mindy. Beautiful. Thank you, Brenda. And welcome everyone. So nice to see so many people here. 61, wow, that's amazing. Um, so glad that you're here with us today. Um, sorry that you're looking for a job, but we're here to help you. We are a community of very, very supportive people. Um, we want you to reach out. We want you to be proactive. We want to give you those resources that you're looking for. Um, one of the things that I like to offer is a monthly um, free event. And we have a call coming up on, on next week on Tuesday. And if you do not know Megan Voigas, you should. She is a fabulous, awesome uh, lady who's going to talk to us about uh, the art of small talk. And if you think about how we network and how we talk to people every single day, it's super important that you get the confidence and the tools to have that dialogue so you become memorable, not forgettable, but memorable as we're networking. We all know how important networking is to um, to our job search. So I'm going to put the link into the chat so you can join. We're up to about 76 participants so far. I have room for about 20 more. So love to see you next week on Tuesday. And don't forget, um, you can join Brenda's Shift live -a next week. I'm sure Brenda will talk about it. Um, but that's kind of what's on my plate. Happy to be here and um, I'm happy to help. Here's my information. All right, Sue Griffey, you're up next. Thanks. I am known as Sue Mentors in the virtual world and many of you know me, I bring my pom-poms. So we celebrate everything, even things that you don't wanna be celebrating. Maybe you get a rejection, but we can find help you find the silver lining in all of that. I have a global mentoring practice. I work with people from all over the in the world. They're all in transition of some kind, almost always job seeking or changing a job focus. I'm asking your help today because I want to know if this new little logo shirt is readable. I feel like it's not. It says Sue Mentors. Yeah. But I'm trying to get something um, for those of us who are showing our collarbones up or our three finger salute. Brenda and Christopher taught me. So now I know already. I will join everybody here that's introducing themselves as one of the all-stars. We love to help you. We know this is a difficult time. So use all the help from all of us. Choose one of us. It doesn't matter. Please reach out and let us know how we can help you. And I will conclude with that. Go ahead, Linda. I was just going to tell you guys, if you're up okay. next, just go. We'll keep no going problem. here. 
Yep. Okay. Hi, I'm Linda Brubaker, and I'm a career strategist, a job search coach, and I work with people of all ages and all stages in their careers, helping them to hire their next boss and find their next forever job. Love being here to support you all in this group. And I will tell you now that I may only be here for part of the call today because part of my day is going to be playing Great Bubby. And for those of you who understand that, uh, I've got two little babies who may be walking in the door in the middle of the call, at which point I'm gone. But I want to be able to make sure that I'm here to tell you all that I'm here to support you in any way I can. In addition to this call, I also host a free job search lunch and learn every Wednesday. Um, we've been a growing group. It's a combination of information, networking, sharing, and lots of Q&A. In fact, next week, Kenneth Lang is going to be our guest expert talking about using LinkedIn as a job search tool. And I'd love to be able to have all of you there. I'm going to put the link in the chat as well. Here to support you all in any way I can. You don't need to have a connection message for me. Just tell, just put your name in the chat and I will find you. Bye, guys. I'm here. Thanks, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Hi, everybody. I'm Joey Himmelfarb. I am an author, speaker, and depending on the hour of the day and the day of the week, a coach to unemployed professionals. I've written a book about that, how to sell yourself on, on, on the job search. I'm writing a follow-up to it as well. And I'm on these calls just to support and help you. And uh, my mantra is positive beats negative every day. So if I hear you going down a rat hole, I'll do my best to bring you back. But for the most part, we're here. I'm here with everybody else just to support you and help you. Thanks. Ken, it's up to you. I have to unmute myself. Um, good morning, everyone. Kenneth Lang here from Wayne, New Jersey. Um, I'm a, a job search specialist. I will now be marking my 200th LinkedIn Live at the end of April. I've been doing it now since 2020. And then I made a decision after that to do a bit of a pivot, to take a step back, and I'll be doing less events, but more, more specific ones. I'm actually, I work at Lehigh Harrison as a brand specialist now. So I was tasked there with doing something called the LinkedIn Lounge where we actually put a lot of our content there. And that's going to be my pivot coming in May and June, a LinkedIn lounge, which is going to be a little bit specific process. I'm going to be going into more detail later on. And in May, I have a special event for uh, people that are going to just be graduating high school and college and their parents, because they really need to know how to navigate that. Uh, I'm happy to support all of you here. Um, I'll be putting in links to the chat, uh, to my events. Um, Brenda, um, very happy to be here and support you. Um, I don't know what the weather is like by you, but it's going to be 70 degrees in a couple of days. I cannot wait to actually go outside and do things. Um, again, I'm here to support you. And I actually have my Follow Friday shirt on today from John Asperian because I just feel in the mood to wear a T-shirt for a change. So again, great to see you, Brenda. And I don't know if I'm passing it on to you or to Christopher, but have a great day, everyone. I don't know if I can switch. Can I switch order? On here, Christopher, in the spotlight? I don't think I can. Well, I think if I remove the spotlight from me and then add yeah, it back in, we could do that. Exactly. Right? Okay. All right. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, good morning, all. Christopher Johnson, the name of my company is Calm Clear Communications. And what I do is produce virtual events, uh, think speakers, trainers, conferences, and help take away that tech headache so things run smoothly. In regards to this VIP session, I can let me know if I can help you be better at Zoom for your next virtual interview. I'll put my contact information in the chat. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you, Christopher. All right. So that's kind of our VIP all-stars. And these are the individuals that will be helping us out as we go through Q&A today. And I'll just remind my all-stars as we go through questions or as our participants are asking questions, please use the raise hand function and then I'll bring you up and we'll tackle those questions. Now, I do want to do um, two quick uh, introductions uh, or rather overviews for information I'm looking uh, to share right now. And we are doing an event next week. And I want to just give a quick uh, shout out and overview of that. And we've designed this event for individuals who may be thinking about making that shift from being an employee of a company to solopreneur. 
And I'm sharing it on today's VIP Job Seeker Office Hours because I know that many of you are at that phase in your career where maybe it's to look at. Well, maybe I'll be self-employed instead of finding another job and find, becoming an employee again. So I've created this event for individuals, specifically those that are looking of making that shift from being an employee to being a solopreneur. This is a free live webinar. It'll be delivered on StreamYard. You'll be video off. So you can just come in and watch and uh, participate in the chat if you like, or just be a very passive participant and watch in for the duration of the event. And I have booked, I think I've got 20 total speakers, including myself, uh, that will be a part of the event. On this call, you probably see a few familiar faces. Christopher Johnson will be joining our Tech Tips panel, along with Michelle. I think she may have been on one of our calls in the past. And Megan Voges, if you remember Megan, she was part of our VIP office hours for many years. And she's doing some things self-employed while she's looking for some opportunities for herself right now. Um, who else? Diana Stevens, who's been a part of our all-star lineup. She's not on the call today, but she'll be uh, joining us for a discussion and I'll look at the topic for her. I'm blanking on it, but it's a panel discussion in just a moment. And who else might you be familiar with? Obviously, Mindy Storn. Uh, Mindy will be joining us on the event. And Brian Grossman, who's also been on these calls in the past, he'll be joining us. So I just dropped the link into the chat, mellermarketing.com slash shift. And I want to just quickly show you some of the speaker topics up here on screen. So again, the panel with Christopher Johnson is the solo, solo uh, tech tips for solopreneurs. Let's see who else is on the call. Um, Diana Stevens is on the how to get a solo business started. And then let's see, Mindy Stern is on the panel, how to confidently shift from corporate to solopreneur. I think I got everyone who's on the call here. So if you're interested, check out that event. And the other thing I want to mention, there may be some of you who recently went through my webinar where I was talking about working but looking for a job on LinkedIn. And at the end of the webinar, I was promoting my upcoming boot camp program. At the time, I was considering closing the doors and only having the enrollment open for a certain period of time. And I've been debating for a while about whether just to keep it as an ongoing open enrollment. And I made the decision to do so. So if you're interested in enrolling in boot camp, you can enroll anytime. Now, one of the perks of, ben of, of enrolling in the program now is that we are doing some group coaching sessions, but these sessions will only be twice a month for the next three months. So April, May, and June. And I'm just going to the FAQ section so I can give you the dates of those. Uh, the, and these are small group coaching sessions that are a part of this. I don't know if I list the dates inside here. I don't think I have it in here. Let me check and see if I have it under. Um, it doesn't say in here, but um, it's the first Tuesday of the month and the third Saturday of the month. So we just held our first one this past week. We're doing another group coaching session later on this month, and then there'll be five more group coaching sessions that you can get it on. Um, with this program, I have several payment options that are available. You can do the full pay for $9.97, or you can choose one of the others all the way through. There's a 12 pay option. So just $97 a month, you can get into the program and you can learn LinkedIn strategies from me. So if you're interested in that, again, go to mellermarketing.com slash bootcamp. And by the way, if you are thinking about enrolling and you want to chat about it a little bit first, just go to one of the checkout pages and I have a link in there where you can schedule a 15-minute discovery call uh, with me where I can help to answer any questions that you might have about the bootcamp program before you enroll. And above that, I, know I, I always do a really bad job of like reminding you that I'm available for my services. I always like shine the spotlight on my all-stars and I forget for myself. So yes, I am available for one-to-one -one coaching. If you're interested in learning more about that, um, message me in chat or you can email me at brenda at mellermarketing.com. And I do offer one hour power hour sessions. So if you're available, interested, and you'd like to know about my availability, do let me know. And friends, we're up to 64 people on the call here today, and we are going to shift gears and get into our questions now. So I'm going to look through our chat to see what questions you all have been asking. And the first one I see, I'll read it out loud. I'm just going to start back up to the top and scroll down. Hopefully you have put the word question in all caps because that will help us. And by the way, if um, 
if you don't have any specific questions, you're just coming here to learn, that's fine. But a question might be, can you look at my profile on LinkedIn and tell me what you think? We would be happy to give you some feedback. We've done some of those mini profile audits in the past, so we'd be happy to do so. But don't be shy. We have an expert panel along with us here today, and we'd love to help to answer your questions. So I'm just scrolling through um, to see if there are, are you guys not asking questions today? Come here, this is your time. Don't be shy. Ask questions. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. I'm not seeing anything yet. I'm up to 1018 and I'm almost to the time um, that we started here. So let's see. Question, here we go. Does anyone have any experience with fractional roles? Okay, so we have a question from a VIP in the audience here today. Does anyone have experience with fractional roles? And Eileen, if you're able to do so, could you unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're looking for there? If you're able to. Good morning. Um, I, I learned this new term, fractional HR. I know it started out in the CFO world, um, but learned it when I came back in the job market a, a month ago. Um, it's very intriguing to me. I'm, I'm actually starting up my own consulting firm again, um, but I'm also open to fractional roles and interim roles. So I'm curious to know if you have done them, what's been your experience, good or bad? Um, where do you find these fractional roles? And it's and the way I understand it, if you've never heard the term before, is you're taking a fraction of a job. So let's say it's a small company that um, can't afford a full time CFO or a you know head of HR or whatever the role happens to be, um, and so they would take you know twenty percent of your time, and another company may take ten percent of your time. So you're you're act, my understanding is you're kind of acting like a regular employee. You're just not full time because they can't afford full time. Right. Joey, I see he has his hand raised. I have something to add, but I'm going to have Joey go first. Go ahead, Joey. Yeah. So, so Eileen, congratulations. That's a great opportunity for you, for sure. So I used to sell cars and I used to sell swimming pools. And whenever I sold a customer a car or a swimming pool, I always said to them, no matter what the bottom line is, figure you're spending, you're going to spend anywhere from two to $5,000 more because you're going to buy new stuff for your new thing. Same thing with being a fractional. I'm not saying you're going to get more money, but if you think you're going to work 10 hours a week, assume it's going to be 20, maybe even 30. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you're going to be fractional, but if you're being hired because you're fractional worthy means you're means you have the wherewithal to put in the expertise, but they're counting on that expertise and somehow some way 10 hours becomes 30. Just food for thought. Interesting. So that you, you really have to um, uh, set sort of guardrails and you're, uh, protect you're, you're your definitely going to underestimate. How much yeah, they're going to underestimate and you are going to underestimate how much time you have to devote. Not that you shouldn't. Okay. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Just yeah. be prepared. Okay. Thanks. Sure. All right. Mindy. Yeah. Hi. So um, I'm also from the HR world. And when I left, I was director of HR for a bank for many, many years. And when I left, I started going into small to mid-sized companies and doing exactly what you're talking about. I would do employee relations for one company. And for another company, I do training and development. For another company, I might do um, some benefit work. So depending on what the company needed, uh, that's what I did. But um, I think what Joey's talking about is to protect your time and be mindful of what that's going to take. And that, that takes some time to figure that out um, in terms of how much time it's going to take because everyone really does underestimate that. Um, but it's a gr great way to begin for sure. And you take what you love most. So, you know, I know what my, um, what my areas of expertise were and what I could, what value I can bring to those companies. And some things I didn't want to continue doing, like I never want to talk about another pension again in my life, I'm fine with it. <laughs> but learning and development, I can talk about forever. So yeah. you have to figure out what your passion is and what you want to spend your days doing. Okay, good. Thank you. You're quite welcome. All right. Thank you, Mindy. Okay. So here's my advice to you, Eileen. What type of fractional roles are you looking for? Is it a fractional CFO or fractional marketing or what is the role that you're looking for? A fractional HR. So it okay, could so be the head HR yeah. person. It could be heading up compensation benefits. Mm -hmm. Could be okay. training. Good. So I have I have two suggestions for you. My first is do a search on LinkedIn for fractional fractional HR consultant. Like look for that job title on LinkedIn, okay. preferably in your targeted geographic area. So for me, I'm in Metro Detroit. So I would look for fractional HR or fractional HR consultant in Metro Detroit. 
and then try to connect with as many of those people as you can. Um, see if you can, if any of them might be open to an informational interview and just say, I'm not looking for a job. I'm just looking to learn more about how you got into this role, how you're finding the opportunities, anything I should be aware of, et cetera. Because the beauty of this is they may be approached for a certain type of an opportunity as a fractional HR consultant. And they go, well, I'm not really a good fit in training, but I just talked to Eileen who's getting into this and she is. So you're doing two things. One, you're learning more about what the field is like. Two, you're building strategic connections, which could end up becoming referral partners for you. And then, you know, referral partners, I guess, work, and that's point three, work both ways, because this isn't just about you reaching out and connecting to them to take from them. But I also want you to build up those relationships so that you can refer opportunities to them. Because in the future, if you get this business up and running, there's probably going to be times where people come to you and say, we need a fractional HR for this. And you say, well, I don't do that, but I can refer you. So build up your referral network. Related to that, when you're describing the role, I I think of, you know, fractional HR, like somebody might be hiring you on a part-time basis, but it could also, and I think that's more of a fractional is like 10 hours a week on an ongoing basis, as opposed to, I feel like on the consulting side of the world, which is where I'm more based in my business, it's project-based. So I'm doing a certain, you know, amount of hours or a specific type of a project. So my suggestion to you is if you don't already have a company page set up yet on LinkedIn, create one. Even if you don't have the LLC yet, get that page started. That way you don't need to have a website just yet. And it's free to set up a company page. And you can use that company page to market yourself as a fractional HR consultant or as an HR consultant. So you can find people who might be looking for you in either category. Is that helpful for you? Yes, it does. Actually, I do have a page, but I'm going to add fractional HR to it. I hadn't thought of that. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Becky, did you you have something additional? You're welcome. Becky, did you have something additional to add to Eileen or something different? Uh, I was just going to say, go to chat or any of the other text AIs and put in something that says, explain to me what fractional blah, blah, blah is. And you could even boil it down and say, you are an HR expert. You want to kind of um, tailor your your prompt. You are an HR expert. You're an expert on fractional. Tell me everything I need to know about blah, blah, blah. Or you could say, give me the five top things that I need to know. Then you could also have it and you could go to it and say, um, research. If you use that on chat, it'll research it. Um, I think even on the free one, otherwise go to Bing, which is now Microsoft Copilot. But Bing is also tied in. Well, wait a minute. Whichever it ties into Google. I guess that's now Gemini. Oh, God, it's Gemini. Yeah, new names. But um, if you use the word research, it kicks into going and doing a search for you. So it's a trigger word that you need to use. And then you could just say, um, tell me the best training program so I can learn how to do fractional and give me all the pros and cons or all the things I need to know or how I do some projections or whatever, you know, just zero in using the AI. There's a ton of information that you can get. Wow. I hadn't thought of that. Thank you for um, sure. chat GPT. I've actually used, cause I've been working with challenger outplacement and they've been wonderful. But um, one of the things they suggested doing is taking parts of your resume cover letters and putting it into chat GPT. Same thing with your LinkedIn profile. And I love the way they rewrite it. Some of it is not, is a little yeah. stretch of, yeah. you know, what I can honestly it's a little say, I do. it's kind of like it's not your voice. So you gotta, yeah. Some people like I, I personally feel like AI and Chat GPT, all these tools are good, but they're like a calculator, and you have to understand math. When you put yeah. inputs into the calculator and then the outputs come out, it's still an equation. But like when I'm teaching or helping my daughter with her algebra, I have to go, does that make sense? And yeah. then you know, kind of rethink what you need to change to get the right result on there. If that makes sense, you do. Not, I would you just have- say. Yeah. Be, be secure. And I think that's a great idea. So you could even take your resume, take your name and your contact stuff off and say, rewrite this to present as a fractional HR and let yeah. it go. Now, the yeah. one that's most secure, if you're worried about your identity, is to go to Claude. Can Claude? you put that link inside chat, Becky? And I'm going to keep us moving into okay. uh, we Good. Got a Thank more you. questions. If that'd be okay. All right. Thank you. And I feel like AI and chat GPT, like these tools are just taken off everywhere and I don't want to have the whole call you just focus on that because I see now that I, now that I've wrapped you guys up and got you asking questions I'm seeing some questions that are being dropped in here all right so here is one I saw one from David Mills and I want to find your question David um I believe it was 
you said, should I um, personalize my resume with a job title at the top? Is that right? Am I remembering the question, David? Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, I, I for the most part, I've had like the uh, job title that I'm generally shooting for, say, data analyst, business intelligence analyst, market research analyst, etc. cetera. Um, but I made an application yesterday and from job scan, it suggested put the actual title in that you're applying for. Okay, so, so let's see, to VIP that All Stars, raise your hand if be. you have any advice for David. Should he make his resume with the job title to match the job posting? Let's see what they say. And I want to see if uh, anyone on the call here has any advice for that. Kristen, are you a career expert? Did you have uh, something to add to that? Okay, we'll get to you in just a second. Um, Mindy, any thoughts on that? Sue, anyone else? Okay, I see Sue is raising her hand. So Sue, what do you think? Well, I think um, my advice is more just generally because I'm coming, I'm facing this also with all the mentees I'm working with, where you think the job is unique or your story isn't really clear or people would understand why you want that role or what you've done, you may want to specifically use the title they're using. It sounds like it, uh, it might be something more unusual, but um, but don't give up on making people see you as a data analyst or what I haven't kept up with you lately, but what you've been working towards. Okay. Um, I just, I think if you try to tailor it all the time, you're going to start confusing yourself. But if the job posting is really unusual, then try to figure out how you can get their attention. They do say to customize your resume to each position, but I can only do that so far. And that leaves a lot of resumes on my computer. I'll so pass this on. Sounds like Andy. sounds like you're suggesting that I uh, keep my general target occupation in the headline. All right. Let's see, Mindy. Do you have anything to add to that? I think it depends, David. I think what Sue was saying is that if it's something unique and it would not um, easily fit into what you normally put in as your title, then mm -hmm. you should be using the title that they're asking for so that okay. they understand what you're looking for. Because we, gotcha. you know, years ago, we used to have an objective on resume. We don't have that anymore. Right. So if it's a unique job that is not clear that you could be a good candidate, then use their title. There's nothing wrong with using their title. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, David, was that helpful for you? Yes, it was. Thank you. Okay, good. Let me just pull myself back up. And Christopher and I are both um, bringing people up and down. So sorry, Christopher. We're like jumping over each other sometimes when we're bringing the panels on here. All right. Um, I see another, qu two questions that are kind of related to the black hole. And you all know how passionate I am about the black hole. If you've been on any of my calls or webinars or anything anymore, I want to just like, let's just all vent right now, go into chat right now and tell me how much you hate the black hole of job search. And you know what I'm talking about when I describe it, it's that soul sucking energy pulling thing that happens when you apply to job upon job upon job upon job. You fill out an application and then they ask you to upload your resume or upload the resume and then do this questionnaire and you go, you spend like a half hour on this job application. And then you get maybe a form email back and that's all you ever hear back. And you feel like you're, you know, it, it, you're out of, it's, it's out of your control. You're at their mercy, right? This black hole thing of job search. And I see two questions. Um, one is what's the best way to get out of a rut after a series of news about not being chosen for a role? And the other person says, does anyone else feel that LinkedIn job searching has become a black hole? Are there any other job search sites you have found more responsive be beyond the application submission? Now, I do have some advice for this. I want to see if our all-stars want to offer any advice. If so, please raise your hand and I will call on you. I think I saw Joey raise his hand and then pull it down real quick. But Joey, did you want to add something here? I do, Brenda. Thanks. Yeah, I, I'm going to kill a dead horse, if I may. Beat a dead horse. Again, for those of you who've been on these calls with me, stop relying on LinkedIn to get you the job other than using the people in your network to help you get the job. And what I mean, what I mean by that is there are people in your network. If, if you have, if the color of your hair is like mine, you have a slew of people that you've met over the years. Going back to grade school, you haven't spoken to them in 20, 30 years. Pick up a phone and call them. Reintroduce yourself and pick up where you left off and just have a con just have a conversation. And who knows where that's going to lead? Because everybody you know knows 250 people you don't know. 
And those 250 people know an additional 250 that you definitely don't know. And I would bet you dollars to donuts, if you look at your career and the history of the people you've used, you used to work for, almost all of the managers you had were people you did not know until you, you became their employee. It was only because somebody like Brenda introduced you to somebody like Billy who got you the job. So LinkedIn is a great tool, but don't get stuck in it. Go to your own personal network and rely on the people that you've known over the years and in your neighborhood. Talk to the people that talk to people. Your barber, your hairstylist, your auto mechanic, your baker, the dry cleaner, right? People that talk to people. That's how you network. That's how you avoid the black hole. And that's how you get somebody who loves you and cares about you to literally walk your resume into a hiring manager's office and say, here, you got to talk to Brenda. Sorry, rant over. <laughs> I'm going to keep that horse here. He like starts off with it. And all those horse lovers in the audience are like, oh, why did you have to do that? It was a nice horse. <laughs> um, so I completely agree with Joey. And if you've been, been on any of my webinars or programs in the past, you know that I talk about that um, your job search, I, I say a third of it, maybe at maximum, a third of it should be applying to the job boards. The other two thirds really is you taking action to make yourself known as a candidate. So here's what I would do. If you want to avoid the black hole of job search, and I don't think LinkedIn is is bad or, or if there's any site that's necessarily better. I've heard some people say apply directly through the company website instead of through the job boards. I don't know if there's any rhyme or reason to that, but here's what I would say. Apply because they're always going to come back and say, did you apply? Because they have a process to screen candidates coming in. But then I would do this. First thing, I would go to their company page on LinkedIn and give it a follow. Click on follow. Okay. The next thing is scroll down to the about section in the company page. Some pages will have a little button that says, I'm interested in opportunities at this company. And when you click on that button, it's like you virtually raising your hand to recruiters at that company. Okay. They're going to see you in there. The next thing I would do is go to posts from that company page and find a recent post and add a thoughtful comment something like eight or more words in there to contribute to the conversation. Most people don't participate in conversations on company pages, so you could get a little bit of visibility for that. And by the way, often the people who are managing the company page are people doing HR or recruiting. So they might go, David Mills, why does that name sound familiar? Oh, that's right. He just applied, applied for our data analyst role, right? So you're building up visibility. The next thing I would do is I would click on the number of employees the company has, and then you get to look at all the employees of the company. I would probably find two to three people who would work in the department department that the role is in and invite them to connect. Now here, I would add a note. And in the invitation, I would not say I'm applying for the data analyst role at Gartner or whatever the company is. I would say, hi, Kenneth, we haven't met yet, but I see that we share some common experiences in data analysis. Let's connect on LinkedIn. After Kenneth, who's the employee of the company, accepts the invitation, I would message the person back. Thanks, Kenneth, for accepting my invitation. I see that XYZ company is hiring for a data analyst position. I'm curious, what do you think about working there? And I didn't ask Kenneth to look at my resume or to work me through the system because he doesn't know who I am yet, right? I'm just relationship building at this point, And I'm asking him a soft question that he's more likely to respond to than can you help me with the job? Because he doesn't know who I am, right? What do you think about working there? And then they may or may not reply, but I feel like the soft questions, you're getting a higher likelihood that they will. They might say, yeah, it's a great environment here. And I like, we have flex hours or whatever. They, you might get them talking. Sounds great. Um, do you have any insight into the hiring process? And I'm asking them another so uh, ask a uh, soft question. Um, or do you have an employee referral program? You know, maybe they get a bonus for referring you in. So try to work the angle there to go from black hole where you at the mercy of the system right? To active participant, where you are taking actions that are making you visible and known that are, you know, you're raising your hand as a candidate. So recruiters might be noticing you. And I think the most important element of this is making connections at the company, because the more connections you have, the higher the likelihood that somebody will refer you over to the position. Okay. So for those of you who asked those two questions um, related to the black hole, getting out of a rut, I want you to move from, and it, it sounds kind of crazy because when I say passive, you're like, what I'm doing right now is anything passive. I'm applying to job upon job upon job upon job. That is not passive. I'm burning myself out. Yes, that is 
what I consider the passive part of job search because you're waiting on them. You're relying on them. I want you to shift two thirds of your activities into being a more active where you're making connections and making yourself visible. Give it a try. If um, Now, I am enthusiastically self-employed. I do have no plans for returning to corporate. But if I did, this is the exact same technique I would do starting today. I would do this like right away. I would not wait on the black hole at all. I know it's a necessary evil, but I would not rely upon the black hole of getting back to work. I would not do that at all. Okay. Sue, I see that your hand is raised. Um, do you have something to add to this? And One then I see Brian. Comment, just to clarify for everybody, these job boards do not have the responsibility to get back to you. It is the hiring org that you're not hearing from. So I just don't want people to leave here thinking everything's a black hole. I'm never going to hear from LinkedIn. It's LinkedIn is just be pay, it being paid by a company to feature it, just like Glassdoor, Indeed, or any of the other thousands that are out there. Just to clarify that. So don't, don't uh, paint LinkedIn out of the picture they have a responsibility, but it's to put you together with the job, but not to follow up. That's the hiring org. And um, I'm sorry about that, but it, uh, I just wanted to clarify it. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you, Sue. Brian, did you have something you wanted to add to that? Sure. Brian, just, you, Go ahead. you know, I, I certainly know what it's like with the black hole. And um, just to echo what Joey was saying, uh, because you nudged me into solopreneurship, I took Joey's thing to heart and your information to heart is I've gone through all my contacts and saying, hey, I'm coaching in this area. Do you know anybody who needs help here? Or do you know anybody who's hiring part-time coaches? And all of a sudden I've been connected to speakers bureaus I've never heard of before. And I'm getting connected to what I need and it was from people in my list from years ago. And I will say for those of you looking for work and experiencing that black hole silence, um, the other thing to do is go on the company page, like Brenda said, see how many connections might be even third connections from you and reach out to them to say, hey, can we connect? And then just start building a relationship. And it, it starts to get its own momentum of, oomph and motivation, but allow yourself a half hour a day only to vent, yell, scream, cry, jump up and down and scream, get it out of your system, and then just keep moving on because it, it will happen. All right. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. All right. I'm going to shift to the people who are who have raised your hand. Nicole, did you have a question that you wanted us to answer for you today? Go ahead. Sure. Um, I had just put this in the chat, but I had a quick question. Um, just to piggyback on what you said, just a comment really quick. I do agree with the um, being in person because I've always been told that and I'm super social. So I found that a friend of mine is a recruiter and I've gone to him several times and I've given him my resume and he's literally walked into the president of each company and said, this is someone you have to talk to. And I know that that's where this is at now. Maybe 10 years ago, it was like that, but not as much as it is now. So I agree. And I think that's it keeps you from getting the fatigue of LinkedIn and everything else. Um, my question is, I've noticed, and I, I'm a journalism major, right? I went to school for that. I know how to write. I know how to write effectively. It seems like I get in my own way when I'm trying to write my resume. And in the past, I've had jobs that I know exactly what I wanted to do. And I've sought those jobs out. I took a break. I didn't take a break, but I changed my career after 12 years from commercial real estate wanting to get into recruiting. And I went to a company to do research to get it on the, the bottom level. I took, you know, I went laterally. I learned everything laterally so I could start to become a recruiter. Well, this private company ended up um, downsizing and they downsized 15 people. After 18 months, I was one of those people. So I feel like I was on the cusp of getting that underneath my belt, plus the couple of years I had from other roles administratively that were HR and recruiting. I feel like I'm not conveying it well enough on my resume. I feel like when I'm reading it, I am. But when I tell other people that have been recruiting for 20 plus years, they feel like it needs to be changed. And I don't know if it's because I'm no longer looking for admin or research positions that are very cut and dry. And now I'm going into uncharted territory because I don't have that five years of life cycle recruiting under my belt that I'm struggling like this. 
or if well, it's if a you don't mind, I'm just going to jump in because yeah. um, we've only got about 15 minutes left and I want to make sure we get to your question. So yeah, I'm sorry. What's but that's, no, I'm kind of like, I'm getting the resume fatigue and I feel like everyone has an opinion. So do you think it's like the resume fatigue is, it, I just need to listen to one person and keep going down the path? Or do you think I might be struggling because I'm going into a new industry and I may not have all that, the five years people are looking for or the three or what have you? Okay. I'm going to go back to the advice I offered. Um, I think it was Eileen in the beginning of the call, which is do some informational interviews with other people who are in the role that you're looking for. And instead of ask, asking the resume experts, and I know they're experts, I'm not using air quotes to be disrespectful, but instead of asking one more resume expert, what do you think? Yeah. Why don't you ask somebody who works in the role? What do you think? If, if that at all, and, and maybe it's not even asking them to look at your resume. Maybe it's just asking them, what are the prospects in this field right now? If you were to try to break into the industry, are there any skills that you'd need to know? Who are the top companies that are in this field? Like maybe shift from so much focus on the resume because I can get where you're coming from, the resume fatigue. You just, you know, at some point you got to like move off of the resume and, right. and get focus all other where. Joey, did you want to add something to that as well? I did, Brenda. I'm not a marketer, so I'm going to defer to Brenda, Nicole, but most marketers will tell you if you have a product, that the market doesn't want it doesn't matter how good the product is okay. so to so to brenda's point go figure out and under get do an assessment of what it is that you should be doing right as long as it's in line with what you want to do but make sure you're targeting the people who want what you have because again if you're selling pencils and they need paper <laughs> your ship's in the night right so so listen to brenda get an assessment figure out what's going on out there and tweak it and don't and don't don't do this resume burnout. You don't want to do that. You need to be up, you need to be positive, you know, chest out, bright smile, right? You got to be exuding confidence. You can't walk in going, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm not, I'm, I don't want to hear that, right? <laughs> do an assessment, figure out what you're all about and figure out what they need and tailor that, tailor your message to that. Thank you. I appreciate both your opinions and your support. That means a lot because it it does start to get like, oh. So thank you for answering my question. I appreciate well, it. Sure. Thank you for being on with us, Nicole. We appreciate it. All right. Um, let me see. There's a couple other questions that are inside chat and we've got about 10 minutes to go here. So I want to try to find the questions that I think others might have as well. Um, thank you notes after interviews, screener, second, third, et cetera. They start to feel formulaic and not genuine. Any rules of thumb to help on this? I'll offer some advice, but I want to see if our VIP all-stars have any thoughts on thank you notes. I personally think you should always tell them, remind them, thank you for the interview for job title on this date. And then in the second paragraph, touch on something that you discussed with that specific person as a part of the process. That's where you can get away from being formulaic and being more um, focused on the conversation item. So it was a pleasure to talk to you, Mindy, last week for the marketing director position at ABC. As we discussed, I believe that my unique experience in higher ed and advertising agencies could really help me to hit the ground running for this role. So I'm going to mention something that we talked about in the interview, and that something is specific to that person. I see Mindy raised her hand. So Mindy, what would you like to add to that? And then Joey, I think as well. Yes, yes, yes. You need to send thank you notes. You would be shocked, shocked to know how many of your competition is not bothering and so if you want to stand out from the competition, then write yourself a thank you note. ChatGPT makes it super simple. Plug in some of that information and get it going. Do not hesitate. You want to be different. You want to be unique. And you want to uh, you want to be stay top of mind. It's another great opportunity to reach out to that company and say, had such a great time meeting with your team. We'd love to talk about X, Y, and Z, whatever we just discussed, because that's exactly what I want to be doing. I, I'm into green energy, and that's what you do. We would be a great match. And here's some things I've been thinking about. Do not lose that opportunity. Any opportunity you have to get in front of the hiring manager or the team that interviewed you, don't give that up. That's gold. Thank you. That's my story. Joey, did you want anything? If, if you thank want you your so thank much, you, Mindy. and I agree, Mindy, you got to send a thank you note. Your competition doesn't. You got to stand above. But Assuming you're taking notes during your interview, which hopefully you are, right? Pay attention to something that you said that struck a chord with the interviewer. Whatever it was you said, if you can somehow make a note to yourself, if it's a word or even a letter, right? Because you want to re you want to reuse that in your thank you note. 
And you do that because then when you do that is now you, now you ring a bell in the interviewer's head when they read that thank you note. Oh, I remember Mindy was talking about this and I thought that was a really cool idea. So this way, it's no longer a formula. It's a personalized thank you note that you sent to somebody that you've made a connection with. You may not realize it, but they may have, but you've got to pay attention to and take notes on what's happening in that interview. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Not sending a thank you note, you might as well not even go in the interview. I, I love Joey's candor, candid responses. I think, I think everyone, everyone has had different opinions on, you know, um, a cover letter with a resume or not, or thank you note or not. I've always like... That was the etiquette that I was taught. You know, when you get a gift, you send someone a thank you note. When you apply to a job, they get a cover letter. I wouldn't not do that. And the only instance being different is if there's an upload and there's no area for a cover letter, then I skip it inside there. So thank you for, Joey always makes me smile. I hope he makes you guys smile too. All right. I see a question in here. Um, Nicole says, I am having issues finding roles that fit my skills. And then when I'm locating the roles, I'm not able to fill out the applications fast enough. I'm encountering some apps that are requiring I go back five years in work experience. Then after all this time invested, I end up getting the generic rejection email, not sure how to get unstuck. Um, so if any of my VIP all-stars have any advice for Nicole, please raise your hand. I'll start off us off by saying first, Nicole, I think you need, if you don't already have this, you should have um, your your experiences for the past five years those should already be in your resume. If you're not putting all of your experiences in your resume, create a Word document, which is like a running everything that you've ever done. So you can quickly copy and paste. Um, and when you say, I'm not filling out applications fast enough, Nicole, I'm not sure if you're able to unmute, but do you mean you're filling out the application and then it's saying the position's filled or the position's closed? Can you help me to understand that? It's a little bit of both. So basically what I'm running into is I'll be like, oh, this role is perfect. And then 15 minutes later, we've got enough applications because a bajillion, million people just got done applying. So we okay. don't need your application. <laughs> so <laughs> two things, would I would, if it were me, this is what I would do, two things. Um, first, if you're applying through a jobs board, LinkedIn, Indeed, or whatever, if the name of the company exists, go to the company website, see if there's a direct link to the job posting from there. Because okay. maybe they're closing it off on Indeed or LinkedIn because they've gotten so many, but maybe they they haven't closed it off on their website yet. So try and see if there's a backdoor way of applying for it. Um, you could certainly go back to the other strategies I talked about earlier as well, mm -hmm. following the company page, clicking on the I'm interested in roles at this company, mm -hmm. uh, adding up a, a, a comment to a recent post from the page, finding employees to connect with on LinkedIn. So you could try to do some of those other things in there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to see if any of the all-stars have any other advice for Nicole on this. Anyone else? I see Vanna Durga. I'm not sure if you have advice for Nicole or are you able to unmute yourself? I see your videos off, but can you unmute yourself? Yeah, it's not an advice. Uh, I have a question related to the LinkedIn. Uh, okay. uh, if you don't mind, a... I'm going to finish off with Nicole first, Vanna Durga. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I want to finish off with this question and then we'll we'll get to you in just one minute. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, okay, so any other advice for Nicole from our VIP All-Stars? And Nicole's question is, um, seems like she's applying through these boards, not getting um, in in time. The job postings are being closed off. Um, any other advice for her? Anything beyond what I've offered? Okay, well, Nicole, if we can think of any other advice for you, we'll certainly, um, I'll ask the All-Stars to reach back to you. And her comment is inside chat. For, for those okay. individuals. All right, um, Vanna Durga, thank you for your patience. What's your question for us? Uh, my question, as you are telling, like uh, when the, the role is not appearing in uh, in the job post, I like for like for example, I have recently identified that uh, when, when LinkedIn says this role is uh, posted uh, so many hours ago, I usually have a habit and, uh, uh, and the people like you say that uh, we should apply through the website only. So I tried to apply through the website, but uh, I couldn't find the, the same role in the website. So what do I do? Okay, so you're saying can't find the website, the job posted on the website anywhere. Try to go to the company website if you can find 
a link to the HR department or the recruiting department, or maybe there's a careers at email that you could email them and say, hey, I saw this job posting on Indeed or LinkedIn. It looks like it might've been closed there. Are you still accepting applications? So try to find an email inbox. It could be a generic email inbox, or it could be the email of the HR person or the recruiter at the organization. And if any of the other all-stars have anything to add to that, Feel free to unmute yourself. And right also, now, if I, I tried that also, but I don't get any response because it is a website. And uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. And sometimes they won't respond, but, um, you know, my, I guess my advice here is like, try the, the different avenues that you can. And then if you're not getting a response from the jobs board or from the HR email, then try to find employees at the company to connect with. Mm -hmm. And remember that approach. If you were on the call earlier, I talked about that approach in the invitation. If you have invitation credits remaining where you can add a note, the first step is, you know, hi, Joey, we haven't met yet, but I see that we work, both work in the technology industry. Let's connect on LinkedIn. After Joey, the employee, accepts your invitation, mm -hmm. message him back. Thanks for accepting, Joey. I see that you work in the technology department for XYZ Company. I'm looking at applying for a role there. Do you have any insights into the culture? Do you like working there? So get them talking. And then maybe the third question is, hey, I've applied for the position and I'm not hearing back. Do you know if they filled the role or if they're still accepting applications? And with that, I'm going to turn to Joey, and then I do need to offer some closing comments for us for today. Go ahead, Joey. I will be quick, Brent, I promise. And if, if I'm not, shut me down, okay? <laughs> Folks, it's 2024. When you submit your resume to a something.com, nobody's reading it. It's a machine. Nobody's reading your resume. It's not 1950 anymore. So you have to understand that. So when you send your resume that way, don't assume someone's reading it. In fact, assume no one's reading it. And in fact, it's, assume it's not even being looked at. To Brenda's point, get somebody that you know or meet somebody that you can become friends with and get them to walk your resume into a hiring manager's office. You're going to beat all, you'll get rid of all this nonsense and save yourself a lot of grief. I'm done. Thank you, Joey. All right. Last thing I want to mention before we wrap up, um, Brian said, hey, can you put the shift info on the screen one more time real quick before we leave. And I said, sure, Brian, let me pull that up right now. So again, we are doing this event. This is a live free webinar. It's next Saturday, April 13th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's for those of you who might be considering making this shift from being an employee to being a solopreneur. And it could certainly be for those of you who are in career transition and starting to look at, maybe I do this, maybe I work on my own. I've got a lot of business and marketing and career experts who are joining me for this free live event. And everyone will be doing a talk about uh, a different topic and they'll also be offering some free resources and talking to you about some of the services they offer if you're interested in learning more from them. So I'd highly suggest you come on out next Saturday. It's free and it is a live event. You will be video off so you can just be watching us as you're learning with us. And we've got some really great um, speakers coming out, how to market your new business, tech tips for solopreneurs, side hustle versus jumping ship, how to get a solopreneur, solopreneur business started. So a lot of really great sessions that will come. And by the way, I know it's on a Saturday. If you have plans already for next Saturday, register, and then we'll send you the playback and the speaker resources. Okay. So very excited to have such a wonderful lineup for that event, including um, Dr. Brian Grossman, Mindy Stern, Christopher Johnson, who's going to be sharing some tech tips with us, Diana Stevens and others. So do be sure to check that out and feel free to share that event along if you know of anyone else who is in career transition. All right, my friends, as we wrap up today, final um, reminders for you. Before you leave, feel free to download the chat. If you go into the chat area, it's either at the bottom where it says to everyone, or it might be at the top of your chat panel. There's three little dots. Click on those three little dots and save chat. And it'll say chat saved. And you can click on show in folder. Usually it goes to your downloads place. So that's really helpful because there were some links and resources that we shared with all of you here today. And you can connect with those individuals later, visit those websites later, but make sure that you download the chat. Um, I don't provide it to all of you. So if any reason you're watching this on like a phone or a tablet and you need access to the chat, just go inside chat and say, can someone email it to me? Someone else in the group will help you. We're a good community of people who help each other. Speaking of helping each other, 
I want to remind you, these Friday VIP Job Seeker office hours will continue to be free throughout the end of 2024. If you do come across anyone who is in career transition, I want you to invite them to come on out and join us. If they are posting about their job search status on LinkedIn, just tag me in on the post, at Brenda Meller, check this out. And that's kind of like your way of winking to me, and then I'll wink back. And I'll go into the comments and I'll say, thanks for tagging me in, Sue. Here's the information for our next VIP job seeker office hour. So I'll help to invite them to come into the call with us. All right. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I've got to jump on another call. So I do need to end this call promptly. I'll give you about 30 seconds to wrap this up. And then I do need to close off the Zoom. And I want to wish everyone a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much to my all-stars for helping us out. Thank you to Christopher for helping to facilitate the call. And I look forward to seeing you all next month. Remember, we're here the first Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern. See you all next Thank month. You. Thank you. Bye. Hasta la vista. Thank Baby. You.